Okie dokie. Well, welcome to Forex Dot Today. The YouTube community of more than 20,000 foreign exchange traders. We gather here today to conduct technical and fundamental analysis with the overriding goal of planning our trades in advance. Why? Because trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. Please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, never risk money you cannot afford to lose. Hello, my name is Wayne. I've been a currency trader for a couple of decades. I have a master's degree in financial management and a bachelor's degree in macroeconomics, both from Harvard. I studied cryptocurrencies with Gary Gensler at MIT. I did the algorithmic trading program at uh, the University of Oxford in England, and I studied alternative investing at Harvard Business School. Yeah. Cool. Pass a series three examination on uh, the fundamentals of our commodity and currency markets many years ago. Did a bunch of things, but mostly I've got my butt sitting on a chair in front of my charts for a couple of decades. I think uh, my webinar, which I'm doing not this Friday, but next Friday, Trade Non-Farm Payrolls Live, I've been doing that one webinar every single month for 16 and a half years. Wow. Wow. And you're like, 16 and a half years. Yeah, that's older than YouTube. I've been doing that one webinar more longer than YouTube has been around. Isn't that interesting? So anywho, I got some uh, water under the bridge, so to speak. I'm a, a majestic silverback. <laughs> that's just funny. I see me sitting in the jungle eating bananas. The mighty silverback. Uh, but anyways, look. I've learned a lot of things uh, through experience and through formal education, and uh, I'm here to share. That is the raison d'etre, so let, let me know how I can help. These live streams are typically hour, hour and a half long. We typically cover what you want. I get some technicals and fundamentals in there and then babble about something. So uh, you can lead the way. Uh, let me know how I can help. Besides these live streams I've been doing every day for 20 years, there's also other resources. Uh, you can buy Wiley Publishing's book called Strategic and Tactical Forex Trading. They paid me money to write it. It's their book, not mine. I'm just the author. So you can buy that if you would. Uh, would you? Could you uh, leave a review? You can join FX Bootcamp video training and live training. Again, that's been going on for about 20 years. And then uh, there's a link to tradersway.com. They pay you sw swaps. Their trades are fast, so there's no slippage. Okay. The fees are competitive, whether you choose an ECN or a variable spread or a fixed spread. Hang on. It's going to find the book. Cool. Here it is. So tradersway.com. They earn my loyalty and respect. Uh, I think that's the biggest thing. I mean, all that other stuff are prerequisites, so to speak. And many other brokers promise such things. So you might say, well, doesn't, doesn't that, that all sounds kind of normal, right? No, it's not normal. It's abnormal. Trader's Way is unusually good. And therefore, I recommend them. And now i got to switch the scene here. Uh, live screen. So, uh, yeah, I just brought that up. Let's see if there's any more ratings. Top reviews. Let's do most recent. Cool. February 9th. An Amazon customer. Thank you, Amazon customer. 
I could have saved so much time and money. I could have started if I had started with this book. Straight to the point, everything a trader needs, all in one book. Thank you. Dwayne, yeah. Dwayne does a great job explaining how to use fundamentals with technicals. He teaches you to pinpoint your entries and exits. I wish I would have found this information years ago, but I've enjoyed the last four plus years with him. Thanks, Dwayne. Roderick, great book. Changed the way I think about Forex trading. I'm all in because of it. <laughs> right on. Wow. Mike put in a big one here. This book is direct and effective, as the title would imply. Check everything you think you know about trading at the door. Leave the emotion and fancy indicators too. This book will inform you how and why money flows from one economy to the other, from one asset class to another. These things affect the relative value of currencies from economies around the world. Once you understand this and use a few simple charting tools described in the book, you can forecast highly probable changes in the value in the value of world currencies relative to one another. This is what Forex is, and that is where the money are to be made, the dollars are to be made. I would gladly purchase an update reprint of this book for only more modern typeface and cleaner graphics. Yeah, I imagine so. I would expect very little change in the content. The, the content is solid, and the book is worth every penny. Right on, man. Thank you, Mikey. Oh, there's, <laughs> there's Meta. <laughs> she updated her photo. Oh, that's so cool. Goes well with the beautiful artwork. Yeah, cool. <laughs> That's so cool. Right on, everybody. Thank you. That made my day. Hey, Lucas. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right, cool. So anyways, let's get on with it. Dollar not strong today. It was, and then it would then it ain't, it ain't. Yen down, Swissy down. Uh, historically, uh, what all of this means to me, when I see down, 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 that tells me risk on. I would expect in that scenario, uh, pound up and euro up. I would expect CAD up. I would spec, expect Aussie up. And I would expect Kiwi up. So there's something going on in Asia Pacific. Lack of a China rally. Although tomorrow in Hong Kong, the mask mandate is completely gone. No mask requirements for anything anymore. Is that the big rally? Is that going to change everything? I don't know about that. But anyways, I don't know. So Asia's not feeling the love right now. Money's not flowing to Asia right now. Coolio. So let's go off and find that. So is the stock market going to rally or commodities going to rally today? Okay, take a look at ASX. Not an update. And look it. It went back to the mean. Didn't we just talk about that yesterday? Look at that. We went right back to the mean and stop. Okay, so what it means is this is bearish, but less bearish than it used to be. Okay, and that, yes, we had a mean reversion, but we the trend did not speed up. In fact, it did not even make a lower low. So this could 
not that it doesn't say it will, but it could, for example, you know, start to breach the trend, and that's that's the red flag. Okay, so we're not there yet. It's still trending down. Oh, for sure. Okay, and it looks like the target is down to here. You know, uh, you're going to have this as your target. Let's do this in a different color. Okay, this is your target because this seems to be your top. Now, of course, that could breach and everything changes upon the breach. If it does this, it's meaningful this way. We're not there yet, so you can't throw that hammer down. What's in play is this to this and then a stop. Probably a mean reversion. Yeah? Let's look at DAX and then the S&P 500. La, 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 la. Okay. Support still doing its thawing. Drag this across. See? All this time it's worked. Look at this. Let me delete this. Uh, okay. Worked here. 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 And from there. Huh? Pretty amazing. So now that if you connect all these, right, you get this zone. And then if you connect these, right, you get this. And we can't tell what's going to happen in March. You're going to have to use fundamental analysis for that. Technically, it shows range bound. Uh, M2 bottom, M3 top. It, we All we know is where bears are going to sell and where bulls are going to buy. Hey, Mita. Hey, Mita, we just showed your, uh, your picture on uh, Amazon.com. <laughs> that was pretty cool. So, as far as the German stock market is concerned, this is, uh, you know, you'd almost say neutral technically, uh, but you can't really say that because technically it's bullish. So, therefore, you get this weird situation where it may be fundamentally bearish, but, right? I wanted to check this. Is it fundamentally or not? Global stock market indices. We can look at the German DAX here. And yeah, it's neutral too. Yeah, see? Same thing, neutral. So, oh, you know what I want? Uh, where'd it go? No, I lost it. Where'd it go? Oh, here it is. February to March. It should be more down, and then it rallies up in April. But it, it's been... If you back out, it seems more up than down, but it should be it should be down. But we had this in the S and P five hundred too, where <clears throat> in a month where it should be down and went up. So we're now we're kind of stuck waiting to fart around. 
uh, I've already done all of this. You can see that I measured the, you know, to the next target. And the interesting thing is if you were a bear on this, it works out really well for you because it goes like this, okay, to this. And uh, here's the target based on the distance from this support to that resistance. But you might want to read, you might be reading into that. What we need to see is a lower low, lower high, sell, 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 lower low. Let it break. Huh? Aye, there's a wee bit of difference between Scottish and Irish. And then here, uh, S&P. Okay. And uh, we talked about this on Sunday in the day trading group. Just the, the lack of news is good news. And I don't think the news is good. It's really the lack of bad news is good news, right? No. But it, ha it can have a dramatic impact, especially in medicine. An uncle of mine was shot down uh, as a pilot. He was shot down in World War II and ended up serving a couple of years as a prisoner of war. And later on in life, because of the malnutrition, he got stomach cancer. And uh, he ballooned up like a pregnant woman. And uh, so anyways, he's in the hospital and the doctors meet with his wife and, and they're like, we're sorry, ma'am, but there's nothing more we can do for him. You, why don't you just take him home and let him pass and dig with dignity and comfort, get him out of the hospital. So, uh, so they didn't tell him. <laughs> they're like, just take him home. He doesn't have long. You might as well be in comfort. So she takes him home. He lives another couple of years. He thought he was fine. <laughs> uh, the lack of bad news is good news, right? No, he still had stomach cancer. But in this case, the lack of bad news from economic reports means there's good news for bulls, right? I don't know about that. Mindset. Yeah, it, it actually is important. Um, in many ways, I do believe we create the fabric of the universe with our mind. Now, nah, that's a hard one to grasp, but it's somewhat true. Hey, good morning, A. Lou. <laughs> All right, so S&P 500, uh, I guess I, I got to make it clear. Sometimes I don't make it clear. Uh, I'm watching that 21 with my hawk eyes. Okay. And, okay. This is what I'm looking for in the next 48 hours. Oh, grand rising. So anywho, uh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Y'all, 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 y'all. So uh I have to update a bit. I think this is actually based on my monthly plan. So, you know, if the weekly plan f I see for the monthly plan to work, the weekly plan can't really fail. It's probably closer to like this type. Okay. I'd rather skip all that noise and just get on with it. But you know, that's <laughs> the market really gives you, rarely gives you what you need. Huh? SBX playing mind games. Well, again, I, I think there's just a vacuum in news and we have to wait. Um, instead of the first Friday of the month, the second Friday of the month. And so there's just this lull, and the lull to me is dangerous. So um, 
In the day trading group, we talked about it at length on Sunday to not get caught in the lull, not to get caught in the vacuum and start forcing trades and then getting upset that they're not work, they're not moving or they're not moving the way we think they should move. You know, in fact, you should be prepared for nothing. I mean, that's what the vacuum is, right? And so really the choices that we were making on Sunday, now here it is Tuesday, but on Sunday what we were talking about is the obvious choice is should we be taking profit and the, the less obvious is should we be adding to our positions and not at that price, but later in the week, which may, might be today, tomorrow, Thursday kind of stuff. Uh, that's what we're talking about on Sunday. Really, we should be taking profit and um, and then deciding, should we be adding down the road? And now that down the road is getting soon, we might be at the crossroads. But on Friday afternoon, um, I got out of my Palladium trade. It was about $200 margin, maybe $250 margin. I'm not quite sure. Uh, it could even be $300 margin. Um, but I took $1,500 out of, right? I turned... I turned 250 bucks into 1,500. Lovely. But, you know, um, many other things were also at Target. So like gold is an interesting one. Um, you know, the, the classic example too um, is like pound yen. Let's move just, let's just skip that and move out to pound yen. Look at our pound yen. Okay. This is at high probably exit zone. Okay. And so imagine that on a Sunday night we're, we're thinking about like, okay, we're getting there. We're getting close to a lot of these targets. And now it's time to, well, if you're going to play the probabilities, if you're going to play the law of averages, you don't look at this as one trade saying, oh my God, it's so crazy. What if we go up here? Well, in this case, yeah, there, that might, it might actually happen. But if you did this 1,000 times, okay, if you looked at monthly R2 1,000 times, how often does it keep going? What percentage, if you got a, a, this setup, if you got to this price level 1,000 different times, how often does it just keep going? And I'm pretty sure it's a low percentage. You're taking a three-point shot from half court. It's just a very low percentage shot. You probably should pass the ball. You know what, I, you know what I'm talking about? The beast, the beast. Euro yen. Okay. We definitely talked about this one in the day trading group. But I think we talked about it on Monday think we were here or something, right? So the discussion was up, down, buy, up, out. And you're here and you might go here and that's an Arctic turtle. Meaning weekly traders are supposed to, let me do this in a different color, I'll do it in ugly orange, okay? Weekly traders are supposed to get out here. Monthly traders are supposed to get out here. So sometimes what happens is the trade extends itself and then snaps back. 
Okay. And for whatever reason, I call that the Arctic turtle. Cool. Now, Europe today had interesting news. Lots of inflation in the Eurozone. ECB's got to go to four now. Okay. And that that's what's going on here. Up, 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 up. And then you're probably like this kind of stuff. Huh? Red hot. Inflation in Europe. Okay. So that might give you the strength to go for the uh, MR2. You know what I stink? All right. And this one's slow. Okay. It's waiting for news out of Asia. Okay. But it's stepping up over a long period of time. It is stepping up. RBA slow to raise interest rates. China slow to fully have an impact, a reopening. Their, uh, their reopening so far has been very domestically focused, which means if you have a, a roasted duck restaurant in Beijing, business is booming because people are finally eating out at restaurants again. But it has very little to do with the iron ore and coal that Australia is producing and trying to sell. Okay, but maybe there's a little bit of hope. Huh? A little bit of hope. Baltic Dry Index is starting to spike. Should you get your Aussie on? Hmm? Look at that. I mean... Dude, right? That's legit, isn't it? Practically doubled. Is that the beginning of a beautiful relationship, a.k.a. a trend? How are you going to get that play? You guys are watching the Baltic Dry Index, right? Oh, I know you are. Don't be coy. Stabilization in price, huh? That's not bad. Coal getting beaten down. I think it was overpriced anyways because of uh, the energy shortage. Still pretty good, huh? It was 50, then it was... 450 now it's only 200 yeah okay still pretty high i suppose if people are buying it all 
Cool. So, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, maybe uh, you can start your argument for buying dips on Aussie. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. Yeah. Okay. I don't know much, but I know the Baltic Tri Index. That makes a beautiful song. So, anyways, that's how you you could be thinking. Isn't it beautiful? Let's do uh, commodities, gold, oil, and Bitcoin. Biddy, 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 can't you see? Sometimes your trades just hypnotize me. And I just love your crypto ways. Hmm? Stock traders are broke, but you're so paid. All right, uh, where should we stop? Let, uh, start. Uh, let's start with gold. Plan A, plan B. I'm a bearsy. I got a roll reversal. And since last night in our day trading group, She's a roll the over. Okay. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Break. Huh? There's the break, guys. Break. Retest. Roll for reversal. Na 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 na. Hammock. Boop 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 boop. Okay, making the money. I'm making it a money. Nice, right? Making the money. Making the money, honey. So now we're, we're testing that 1800. And that was one of our targets, yo. Cool, right? Are we going to get the lower low? Yeah, probably. Coolio, coolio, coolio. Oh, 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 oh. So all we did is test the four hour 21, drop it like it's hot. Drop it like a hot. Huh? It's nice. Yeah. Yeah, man. Never mad at the fact he's corrupt like a senator. Look at that. It's lovely, man. Lovely. Target is 1775, as you already know. So, great. It's moving good. And uh, I went into this trade in a much more detail in the day trading group. So why don't you join the day trading group? If you're not so sure, or if you don't have a ton of money, join the swing trading group. The swing trading group meets today in the stop, look, and correct session. Stop, look, and correct session. It's sort of like, how do you describe it? It's an opportunity for the community to get feedback on their trading. It's like a feedback session. You, you, if you so choose, you are the topic. Your trading is the topic. It's like a mini mentorship. And then you meet on Thursday again. And on Thursday, it's technical analysis, it's fundamental analysis, it's trader psychology, it's big picture. It's small picture. Um, it's all kinds of stuff. Sometimes I give homework for group work, you know, where you meet in groups and you do stuff. I haven't done that in, a, in about a month and a half. But sometimes you get into groups 
with other traders just like yourself, maybe not as advanced newer traders, maybe very advanced as older traders, but everyone's getting feedback because we're from different cultures and different, you know, and in different countries and we get a different look at the world a different view of the world and we're sharing it's just really it's really an interesting group okay swing trading groups 99 bucks a month it's not expensive you should join is what i'm saying so the stop looking correct session is today. If you're in the day trading or today at two, if you're in my day trading group, we meet today at four. So for those people that are in the day trading group, it's a busy day. So if you want to go to Ryan's stop looking correct session and skip mine and just watch the recording, I'm perfectly fine with that. It's a tough day, a lot of work. Cool. So anyways, in the day trading group, uh, yeah, we already, we already talked about all this one. It looks like it's trying to make a new lower low. And it's now at a 650% return on investment, internal rate of return. Okay. New York time, Paolo. Six hundred fifty percent internal rate of return. Every dollar I invested is now worth six dollars and fifty cents. Imagine I had a billion dollars on that. That would have been a good month because that was, uh, look at this, one week, two weeks, three weeks. So I'm just starting my fourth week on that. Remember, one of the goals that, that I have as a coach is to give you examples of staying in trades longer. I asked the group what they want to achieve in 2023. And letting the winners run was a big goal that a lot of people were trying to work on. And I'm like, cool, I'll show you. So there's another example. The peso trade is another. And um, I was in that one for three months, took profit, and then re-entered. And I've been in that one, for, I think, for three weeks. Again, that's just me showing examples of how to pick a winning trade and stay with it. Okay, my oh my WTI. Okay, wowzer. Wowzer. Oops. Okay, that's pretty convincing. We have API today and EIA tomorrow. And that will dictate whether this trend will survive or not. But it's looking good now, huh? The thing is, that's that might be an issue right in here. And make sure you get that API number. Okay. Okay, my oh my WTI. Bitcoin can't confirm the oil rally, so there's something else going on there, probably related to Russia and Russia supply on the global market and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> Bitcoin um, 
as I said on Sunday, and now it's Tuesday, on Sunday what I said is, uh, well, it ain't bullish. And that says a lot, especially if you're a bear. So what has transpired since the Sunday open was the central has held. So the target is two, one, two, four, three, point four. Twenty one thousand two hundred forty three dollars and forty cents. I'm rounding it. <laughs> okay. And if you're a longer term trader, you could say, well, if I get that, then I'm treating it as a March front run. And you're really targeting 20,000. So it comes down to opinion. Someone's going to do this. Okay. We don't know if that's the majority or not. Okay. And someone's going to look at it this way. Which one is right? I don't know. You're supposed to have an opinion and you're supposed to be trading that opinion. If you're looking at the market to tell you what to do, you're roadkill. Okay. Sometimes you get hit. Sometimes you get narrow misses. Sometimes you get run over. You're just in the way if, if you don't have an opinion. I hit a deer the other day. And, uh, oh, it was fine. And my BMW was fine. <laughs> and, it, and we kind of just, you know, hugged and, and uh, parted ways. No, no blood, no foul. <laughs> I think he probably has a bruise on his butt. But that, that was a close call. And that, I think, happens to amateur traders all the time. But eventually, if you keep that up, uh, you get run over. Couldn't believe it. No damage at, at all. I heard a thud. All right, so anyways, uh, risk off, risk off, risk on. Going back to this, um, not risk off today, but it's still not risk on. So it might just be a waiting game. And I, once again, on Sunday, we talked about the likelihood of that. And maybe it, the markets kind of look like this for a while. I, I, I don't know because I have to manage my own trades. I mean, I don't know either. Okay, but as long as this ain't up, I'm doing okay. But the higher we get in the bands, the, the less likely I'm okay. And then, of course, if we're above the bands... I ain't okay. Okay. So I got to stay patient, stay disciplined. It's sort of a sniper who, uh, you know, where the enemy is super close, too close for the sniper, and he's just sitting there. Maybe a hundred yards from like five soldiers. He's like, he has to just be focused, patient, disciplined, can't panic. Just be still, be quiet. <laughs> right? You take a shot, you're dead. You'll get one of them. But you kind of want to live, right? So... The thing is in trading, we're like, ah, don't worry, it's only a trade. I'll only lose money. No, 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 no. It's important. Okay, let's take a look at then the exotics. And I should be doing okay in a scenario like the one we have going. And so now I look up peso. Yeah, I'm doing all right. Maybe trying to make a lower low. I don't know if I'm going to get it. But 
this becomes a cell zone, not today, but maybe in a week or two. So I want to watch this breach. Meanwhile, we're just still just kicking off the daily moving averages, drop into the 4 -Z. Okay, kicking off the sell zone, 55 in control in both of these, which means it's a slow moving down, downward move. It would be great if we got a lower low today. Uh, I'm not sure if we will, and that's why I'm hedged. So I'm selling U.S. dollars over here. So now I got to switch and go to a different part of the world. Okay. And I'm uh, buying U.S. dollars here. And I'm hedged. Now, of course, I could just, what this actually says is take profit. So maybe I'll do that and be so what we talked about yesterday in the day trading group was a smart beta approach to hedging. And I'm not following it here, but we talked about it as a plausible strategy. So I'm kind of at this neutral zone now. But you could make the argument to, to start, you know, moving some of this in. You know, for example... Okay, that's a, a guaranteed 100 pip profit on my hedge. So, uh, okay, that's neither here nor there, right? So if it breaches above here, I'll probably get knocked out and uh, I'll whine and cry. Oh, I only made 100 pips. But it's a hedge. I'm not in it for the pips. But... I don't want to throw away the pips either, right? Okay, and that is designed to offset any loss that I might have on that peso. So I go back to, I guess I'm exotics. Okay, so that 100 pips I'll definitely make can offset any kind of upward move here where I might give back 100 pips in profit, but I've already picked up 100 pips in profit. So it's basically neutral. So now I can stay short longer. So it's sort of like if I had my stop here, for example, um, okay, I could then move it back up higher because the other one allowed me to afford that. Well, So I'm doing all right on gold today. So I'm probably going to want to watch the metals market. And here's that palladium trade. And lovely tell your mom, boy, did that work yesterday, huh? Great. Just a nice move here. Okay. And I think th th this is the one I did uh, earlier in the month where I think I sold like here. And uh, well, I, I used this down here. I did a big speech of the law of averages and uh, I exited about here so sold down down and then the up I exited and that's the 750% uh, ROI no, not ROI. Sorry, I keep saying that. Internal rate of return. Cool. And so now, do you think I want to get short again? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm watching this zone. Uh, but I need, uh, I need disinflationary market conditions. And I'll probably get that today.
I might, I might get another one on. But I want to see what's going to happen with S and P today. So I need a, I need a down day, Bubba. Hmm. Cool. So I got a lot of work today to do. I'm going to do some work on my fundamentally based super secret alert service. You might get an email from me today. I want to learn. I want, well, I want, let's say, four people Maybe five people. Five seems too many. Three or four, maybe five people to share 30 seconds of how this service, how you're using the service. That's it. I, not even a testimonial, really. I don't even want that. I just want you to share how you're using it or why you're using it. And so if it's 30 seconds, half of it's going to be, hey, here's this person from this place. How are you using it? I do use it for this, this, this reason. Oh, right on. Cool. So I'm going to email uh, three or four or five of you. And if you're willing to do that, great. Thank you. Uh, you're just sharing. So hopefully that's okay. The other thing I, I want to start working on again is our cruise to the Bahamas to get you incorporated. Hmm? We will have a meal there that you will tell your grandchildren. Even if you don't have grandchildren right now. <laughs> no, even if you're 90 years old and you go on this cruise with me, we are going to have a meal that will be one of the best meals of your entire life, even if you're 90 years old, it's going to be that special. And I'm not even joking. And it's going to be sort of a precursor of maybe an annual conference that I can set up. And I'm looking for, forward to that kind of stuff. I'd like to also do a capital raising workshop probably in 2024. I'm looking for that, forward to that. I think that'll be fun where you're learning how to do your sales pitch and you're going on stage and practicing and we're doing networking events so you can practice your elevator pitch in a networking event where there's loud background, background noise and a band and you got a cocktail in your hand. I even thought it wouldn't it be great in between all these events, in between sessions, wouldn't it be cool to have a tailor come in and discuss for maybe a half an hour how a bespoke um, suit is made? And then we do our thing, and then there's another break, and we have a, a watch expert come in and bring, let's say, $200,000 worth of watches into the room and explain to us the different makes and, and kind of models and the different intricacies of watch complications. So you're like, oh, an Odemar. 
Oh, a patak. Oh, a panerai. And I think that's interesting. A, you might just like fancy watches, but uh, when I first went to the Middle East, I really knew nothing about the Middle East. When I say I knew nothing, I knew nothing. And so uh, I met someone at the, the conference. We're having lunch. I think it was a reporter, in fact. Um, yeah, actually, I think it was a reporter. And so anyway, so uh, I'm having lunch with this reporter in, uh, in Dubai. And I, I said, I, I said, can I ask you something? I said, everyone dresses the same in the white robe and, the, you know, that kind of stuff. And he's like, yeah, it's, uh, it's part of the Muslim tradition of uh, modesty. And I said, well, how do you tell who's the boss? right? How do you tell who's filthy, stinking rich and who might be like washing your car? <laughs> and he smiled and he said, the shoes and the watch. He's like, if you spot, you should be able to spot the guy's got a hundred thousand dollar watch on. He's the boss. So it's kind of interesting. Like you're, you're just out of the corner of your eye. You're like, Oh, that's a royal oak. Huh? Bada bing, bada boom. So you got to know these things, right? We have a boot camper who's an expert in super yachts. Not a yacht. Don't bring your $10 million yacht to this show kind of stuff. $10 million yacht? What are you, poor? So wouldn't it be cool to have, you know, have this boot camper... Come in and do a presentation about the, the yachting business and what people are looking for, just so you know. Because one day you're going to meet with fabulously wealthy people and you're going to convince them to, you know, throw you a bone. Ah, here's 500000 Let's play with it. But you need to know the lingo and the people and the thought and have a comp something to talk about. So if some guy happens to have a yacht, you can talk about yachting a little bit. And you're like, oh, here, you know, these are my two favorite yacht manufacturers, right? Or you're like, oh, the ceramic Panerai? You're like, I just love the way the case has no vibration. It's such a great uh, you know, opportunity. I don't know why anyone would buy the newer, you know, metal cases. Why would you do that? You want a Panerai because it's all ceramic. You know, and you have a conversation. They're like, oh, I totally agree. You you know, I think it'd be interesting, uh, uh, you know, uh, like if I did an event like that, one of the places in Atlanta, we could do our annual conference. First of all, Atlanta's great because you can every, it's one of the, or it's the busiest air passenger airport in the world. So no matter where you are, you can fly to Atlanta, right? Right next to the airport, like literally you're touching the airport. It's that close to the airport. Is the Porsche USA headquarters. They have a huge, beautiful building with a museum, with a restaurant, Next door is a hotel. The hotel has a rooftop deck, but Porsche also has a full bore racetrack. So what if we were meeting and doing our conference and we're staying at the hotel and we're eating at the restaurant and we take a break, we go through the, uh, the museum and they're teaching us all about the history of Porsche and all the, the refinements of Porsche and why you should like Porsche. So that one day you might meet a Porsche collector, you know, and, and guess what? Someone with, you know, five Porsches can probably invest into your Forex fund. Meanwhile, one of our breaks, we go out onto the racetrack and race some Porsches for an hour. And so when you meet someone fabulously wealthy who might be able to invest in your Forex fund, you're like, Oh man, one this one time I was at the Porsche headquarters and we were out on the track racing some, you know, some spiders, some GTs, you know, and you're telling this story. You can hang 
with someone that has a hundred times more money than you because you're living the life they want. So anyway, so there's so much we can do that's on my mind. So I'm trying to knock things out, but I got to work on my taxes too, you know, man, so much things to be doing. But uh, I'm thinking of you all the time, every day, and I hope at least some of these things are of interest to you. Yeah, Edward says $10 million will pay for one of the tenders. <laughs> it's true. But, you know, I think wouldn't that stuff be cool? Like I literally thought even on a capital raising workshop where we're just working hard for three, four days straight, I think it would be a really cool break where everyone's at their round table and group of, let's say, five people. And on every table, I put a watch. Maybe I bring something from home. We don't even need an expert. And I thought this would just be a fun break. So I put a watch on every table. And I say, uh, you guys have 30 minutes to Google it, or even 20 minutes. You guys have 20 minutes to Google it, look it up, try to find something as close as possible. And in 20 minutes, you're going to go up on stage and present the watch. Now, a couple of things. You're going to learn about the watch and all the other watches because they're presenting. But a lot of people have fear of like standing on stage or in the center of a room in a spotlight or as Michael Jackson say, would say, in a round and talk. But if you're going to pitch your Forex fund and raise money, you got to kind of have to deal with that fear. You may never get over it, but you have to learn how to cope. If you can't tell people about what you're doing, it's going to be very difficult for you to raise money, you know? So even if it's just 20 people in a room and you're friends with everybody by this point, you got to get on stage and tell people about, you know, do a presentation about my Panerai. Or uh, do I have any of these around here? No. This one would be a trick one. Uh, there is no manufacturer. It's custom made, um, which is great because it's a skeleton. But I don't have any of these watches. Lane or oh no, I have a Cartier. So you're like, what's the, what's the big deal about this Cartier? Well, there's no big deal. It's actually just classic, right? There's nothing special. There's millions of them, but you still should be able to do a little presentation. At least you're getting used to talking about something like that, right? And especially if you're not familiar with watches, it's a little uncomfortable, and that's good. You want to get used to being in the pocket. You know what I mean? You're in the pocket. You should be able to hang and roll with it. It's sort of like that time when I was at the, the Forex Expo in, um, in Shenzhen. Was it Shenzhen? Yeah, Shenzhen. And uh, I was on the panel discussion at the very end of the conference, and uh, about, I don't know, 200 people showed up for this last presentation. But because the exhibitors wanted to go out and just party because the whole conference was over, nobody showed up except me to do the presentation. And people were freaking out. And I just told the, uh, the, 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 um, the hosts, right, the expo people, I'm like, don't worry about it. I said, the, I said in English... There's a saying, the show must go on. I said, I'll tell you what, put me on stage with a microphone and I'll just field questions. I'll just take questions from anybody in the audience and I'll go as long as it takes. Hour and a half, I think is what it was. I'm like, I'll just sit on a chair on stage and I'll take questions from the audience for an hour and a half. They can ask me anything. Okay? You just got to be able to hang in the pocket Right. And that that's uh, that's an analogy from uh, American football where you're you're the uh, quarterback 
and everyone is totally surrounding you and you're going to be crushed. You're going to get knocked over. You know, like you can get hurt in the pocket, but you got to stay calm and look for open people to pass the ball. You just got to stay confident that, you, you know, stay confident and don't run because it's hard to make the play if you're running. So just stay calm in the noise and the chaos. And that's sometimes required, especially uh, in sales, right? And if you're not used to that kind of stuff, then you, 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 this will be fun. So I got all kinds of cool ideas from uh, learning about watches to bespoke um, suits. Because again, you should be able to tell if someone's got a $100 suit, a $500 suit, or a $1,000 suit. Why not? Well, if you're looking for rich people, <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah, when I was a young man, for example, here's how I used to train myself. And this is a true story. When I was a young man, didn't have a lot of money, but I want to look like a million bucks, right? So I used to go to um, uh, thrift stores, used clothing stores. And imagine that they would have, oh, uh, I don't know, at least a thousand suits, right? Just all in hangers. You can just buy these suits that people had donated. Suits. And what I used to do is I would just walk down the row with my hand, feeling the material as I go, but also you can tell by the way the shoulder sewed. So I could just walk. It would take me, I'm not even joking, 30 seconds to, to analyze 1,000 suits. Because I'd just walk and go, with my hand. i just walk down the aisle, and all of a sudden I'd stop. I'm like, boom, whoa, okay? This is, this is proper wool. Then, then I would double check the shoulder, and you could see the stitching. You're like, all right, this is a nice suit. You pull it out and you look and you hope it's the right size. And then what I would do if it was the white, right size, I'd have it dry cleaned and then I would have it tailored. And so it was pretty cool later on, you know, in my, uh, you know, later on, I had all these um, vintage suits, some of them like from the 1960s and 1970s, which is weird because, you know, the fabrics were really strange back then. You got some really weird fabrics. So, um, but also um, the tailoring and stuff was weird where you have bell bottoms. Well, I don't want bell bottoms and I don't want polyester, right? But you'd get some of these suits and then you would have them retailored. So now I get a really classy suit and I'd be in it for $200. And, but, you know, it's a $2,000 suit, custom tailored, right? And all of a sudden, boom. So it's kind of a, a fun experience, fun experience. But imagine you can tell, you can, even with your eyes closed, you can tell if it's a good suit or not a good suit. And that's, that's kind of fun. It's just fun. So if, would anybody find events like this fun and entertaining as well as informative? It's like, does this sound good or is to you or is this just me? Because it sounds like something I want to do, <laughs> right? A tie manufacturer, a hat manufacturer, sh shoes. Can you imagine having someone come in and explain the difference between $100 shoes, $400 shoes, $600 shoes, and $1,000 shoes? Wouldn't it be neat? To have a shoe expert come in and boom, 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 boom. Not that you, but it just helps you because now then you can spot whether someone's got nice shoes or very nice shoes. And imagine someone's got $1,000 shoes and you said, oh, I love those. And you mentioned something poignant about them. Maybe you know the manufacturer or know someone that might be able to manufacture them. And they say, oh, no, 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 it's not those, it's these. And they talk a little bit. And now you have this 
Now you, you, you just classed up, so to speak. So someone that might have $100 million in the bank, you don't have $100 million in a bank, but now you have a common thread. You see, you have a common thread. You, at least you, you know that they, 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 they appreciate, and you can also appreciate. You just maybe you don't own them, but you can at least appreciate, and you're knowledgeable. You know, I think that would be fun. And I bet you your last Forex conference or your last investing conference didn't do anything like that. Huh? How about uh, during a, a, an evening break, we have a sommelier just tell you the, the differences of fine wines. Maybe we have some wine tasting, but you should be able to like very quickly be able to pick out the, the you know, the basic grape varieties and be able to have a enough where you, you can smell it and maybe you know it, what kind of wine it is uh, or whether it's European wine or American wine or, or um, Chile, Chilean wine or you're like, oh, this must be Argentine Malbec, right? Or a spicy Syrahs from, from Australia, that kind of stuff. I think that that would be just, that would be something fun. You should be able to swirl the glass, sniff it. Now, it makes you look like an arrogant prick, but guess what? You're going to be raising money from arrogant pricks, so you should know, and you should get over it. Stop thinking that only arrogant pricks do this. You should be able to do it, and why do they spin it around? And you hold it to the light, and you look at the veins, and you're like, ooh, look at the acidity in this, you know? And you're like, are you sure this is a Chardonnay? Are you sure? You're like, ooky, I can smell some oak on the lee, huh? Mm. But it's unusually acidic. And all of a sudden, yeah, now you're an arrogant prick too. Okay? I, so anyways. <laughs> no, you know, um, the thing with Napa is it doesn't produce bad wine. It can produce really good wine. The winemakers there produce really big, bold, and sometimes it's not actually desirable, but, um, but they do it. Um, but I've also had some really amazing Napa wines. And being a, you know, Going through Napa, go, living through the whole experience as you go from, you know, the south where, you know, where you're doing champagne, working your way north, uh, doing, you know, more and more red and stronger wines um, all the way up beyond even Calistoga. You know, you can really get a lot of different varietals and a lot of different styles Um and it's, I don't know, it's really cool. So if you're going to come to the Bahamas with me and incorporate your offshore account um, or your offshore company, um, you will be able to see the second largest privately held collection of wine in the world, including the oldest bottle of wine in the world, and then we're going to have this dinner sitting at this table for about 18 people in a cellar that was originally a prison that the British Navy built for Caribbean pirates. And it is filled with thousands and thousands and thousands of bottles of Italian red wine that are decades old. And we're going to have a meal in this room lit by nothing but candles, candlelight. And we're going to have a gourmet Michelin quality meal. Just us. And that'll be one of the stories you'll tell on your capital raising 
process when you're raising money and you tell you tell people that experience and that you've you do think this is what you do this is the life you live it's a good story to be able to share cool right so anyway, so sorry for the babble at the, the end, but I got a lot going on, a lot in my mind, and I'm trying to prioritize and organize all these different things. A lot going on is all I can say. The markets are doing great. We got some trends. Very cool. We have lots to be grateful for. One of them is that we have a community like Forex today. So thank you for being here. Maybe consider joining FX Bootcamp. Maybe consider using Trader's Way as your broker. And uh, a reminder to everybody, if you're in the day trading group or the swing trading group, everyone meets today at 2 p.m. for the stop, look, and correct session. If you're my day trading group, you meet with me at 4. But if, if you're like, dude, I can't do 2 and then do 4, then do 2 o'clock. Prioritize Ryan's stop, look, and correct session over mine. It's okay. You don't have to attend mine live. It's a busy day. So if, if you only have time to watch the recording, by all means. Okay? So peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. Please have a wonderful day. I'll see you when I see you. Cheers.